George Orwell is a very famous modern uh, novelist. He was born in India in Motihari, Bihar. His original name was Eric Arthur Blair. So uh, this name is also important. He was born as uh, Eric Arthur Blair in India, Motihari, Bihar on 25th of June, 1903. So you can mark on the book, this is very important point. And you have to remember the name, Eric Arthur Blair, born in Motihari, 25th of June, 1903. His father uh, was uh, working in the OPM department of the civil service in Motihari, Bihar. That was the reason he was there in uh, India. But his mother took him to England when he was only one year old. And after that, he never returned to India. So he remained in India only for one year and thereafter he shifted to England. He got all those studies in England only at the Eton College. After his education, he began to work as an imperial policeman in Burma because uh, his father was also shifted from India to Burma. So his education uh, was also there in Burma. Uh, he also act as a British imperialism and he was disgusted and thus resigned from the post and returned to England in 1928. He worked as a uh, Christ, uh, as a policeman in Burma. In 1928, he returned back to England. His first work was down and out in Paris and London. The first work is very important. Down and Out in Paris and London that was published in 1933. So this is the first work. It was a non-fictional memoir on the theme of poverty that he had experienced in uh, these two cities after leaving Burma. Burmese Days is his first novel and uh, this novel presents a portrait of the dark side of British Raj in Burma. Orwell critic of British imperialism also found an outlet in his essay Hanging and Shooting an Elephant. These two are the prose uh, non-fictions of George Orwell, Hanging and Shooting an Elephant. In an essay in 1947, he wrote that every line he had written since 1936 had been directly or indirectly against totalitarianism and for democratic socialism because uh, all the works of uh, George Orwell are having political background. And he uh, mainly writes about the totalitarian government, means the dictatorship. So uh, that is the reason he said that every line that he has written from 1936, directly or indirectly, it is against the totalitarianism and it is for the democratic socialism. He was, uh, favor, he was in favor of a democratic government. He was totally against of the dictatorship. And he wrote uh, mainly about the totalitarian government in Russia. Animal Farm is an allegorical novel that reflects on the events leading up to and during the Stalin era of the uh, Bolshevik Revolution in 1970. Bolshevik, uh, Bolshevik Revolution is a political uh, revolution that occurred in 1917 in Russia. He was also very famous for his uh, dystopian novel 1984 that depicts a society that is uh, tyrannized and uh, dictated uh, by a man named Big Brother. And that, that big brother is uh, making a totalitarian government. He is having total control of the entire citizen. That is called a totalitarian government. At the age of 46, he died of tuberculosis. And he admitted in uh, an essay called Why I Write. They say is why I write, where he says that where I lacked a political purpose, I wrote lifeless books. So please explain totalitarian government. 
totalitarian, totalitarian government is a government which is having a full control, just like North Korea. The government, uh, the dictator is having full control of the, of the entire nation. Each and every individual is being watched by that government. Are you getting? The government by the king. Government by the king. Full, uh, total control of everything, uh, just like Napoleon also. Government by the king. Government by the king, very right. That is called okay. totalitarian government. Oh, okay. uh, if you know about okay. Kim Jong, Kim Jong, who is the uh, maintaining a totalitarian government in North Korea. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So the same uh, government uh, was also maintained by Stalin in 1917 during the Bolshevik Revolution in Russia. Orwell has also re uh, wrote essays like Inside the Whale, that is a review of Tropic of Cancer by Henry Miller. This uh, question was asked in one of the exam that uh, Orwell's essay Inside the Whale is a review of which book? So it is a review of uh, Tropic of Cancer by Henry Miller. The Orwell Commemorative Committee in Motihari has been demanding a restoration of Orwell's birthplace as a heritage site, but till now uh, his birthplace has not been converted as a heritage site. Major works of uh, Orwell. As I am uh, telling you, only the major works you can note down, you can take the major works which are important from exam point of view and you can remember the important points of these novels. The first is the Burmese days. From the title itself, it is very clear that he is talking about those days which, uh, in which uh, he was living in Burma. So it is set in 1920, Imperial Burma, in the fictional district of Kayak Kayao Tada. This is the name, uh, typical name of uh, setting of this novel. So you can not, note it down. Kayao Tada is uh, based on Qatar, formerly spelled as Katha. Uh, this is the town where uh, George Orwell practically served while he was living in Burma. So the setting of Burmese days is important. The, near, the place is important. The year is important. The second uh, novel is A Clergyman's Daughter and Keep the Spedistra Flying in 1936. Coming up for year 1939. Animal Farm, a very, very important from exam point of view. We will discuss this novel in detail. Animal Farm was published 1945, just two years before Indian independence. Remembering uh, the year of publication is very important and it is easy to remember if you are able to connect those years with some known years like uh, the independence of India, like your own date of birth, your uh, family's members date of birth and you can connect with those in years, in 100 years, in 200 years like that. Because remembering each and every works year is not uh, possible for anyone. 1984. That was published in 1949. So uh, if you write 1984, so this is easy to remember. 1984 is the name of the novel. So you just uh, reverse the last two digit, that will become 48, and then add one, that will become 49. So it was published in 1949. This is the way uh, you can remember the years. Animal Farm, 1945 and uh, 1984 in 1948. Uh, sorry, 1949. Then uh, he also wrote uh, major non-fictions. The non-fictions of George Orwell is equally important. Down and Out in Paris and London, the title is important. The Road to Vegan Pyre. This is again a type of autobiographical essay by 
George Orwell. That is the reason it is important. Published in 1937. So this uh, title and year is important. The next is the lion and the unicorn. Subtitled Socialism and the English Genius. The next is uh, the ethics of detective story from Raffles to Miss Blandis. This essay is very important. The ethics of the detective story from Raffles to Miss Blandis. The essay contrasts uh, the Raffles crime stories. A. Z. Raffles. A. Z. Raffles is a crime story writer and he wrote the novel No Orchids for Miss Blandis. So, No Orchids for Miss Blandis is a crime novel by James Hadley Chase. So, he makes a review of this novel, No Orchids for Miss Blandis, and observes the immense difference in the moral atmosphere. And he makes a comparative study of James Hadley Chase novel, No Orchids for Miss Blandis, to A. H. Raffles, crime stories. In the semi-pornographic crime novel, which crime novel? No Orchids for Miss Blandis. This is a semi-pornographic crime novel. So while reviewing this uh, novel, Orwell describes the breaking down of all the taboos as author attracts readers by violence, cruelty, and sexual sadism. So this is all important about this essay. Why I Write, again a very famous essay, published in 1946. We will discuss this essay in detail. So many questions have been asked from this essay. Politics and the English Language. This essay criticizes the ugly and inaccurate written English of his time and examines the connection between political orthodoxies and the debasement of language. And shooting an elephant inside the whale. These are the non-fictions of George Orwell. Now I'll be talking about the animal farm. These are the main characters which you can see here in the picture. The two main characters, one is Napoleon and the other is Snowball. Uh, Napoleon is uh, representing which political figure in Russia? Any idea? Can you listen to me? Stalin. Am I audible? Stalin. 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 Sir. Stalin. Very right. And snowball. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's Stalin. Stalin. Trotsky. 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 Very right. So these are the two major political figures in Russia who were... Uh, I'm sorry for the disconnection. Our network problem is there today. So we were talking about the two major political figures of the Russian Bolshevik Revolution. One is uh, Trotsky and the other is Napoleon. Napoleon is like a totalitarian uh, leader who was uh, trying to have the full control of the entire Russian political regime, whereas Snowball was uh, favoring the Democratic Party, the, de the Democratic government. So the two novels uh, of George Orwell, that is The Animal Farm and 1984, this, both the novels are based on the Bolshevik Revolution of Russia. So Napoleon is representing uh, Stalin and Snowball is representing Trotsky. So which character represents, which political figure is important? Why is
USA. It is published in 1946. It is a dystopian novella. Why dystopian? Because it is talking about the uh, nonsense political resigns happening in Russia. The original title is Animal Farm, a fairy story. The subtitle is very, very important. Uh, uh, although there is nothing like fairy in this novel, but subtitle is a fairy story. That is the reason it is confusing. And it is important for, uh, from exam point of view. It is an allegorical novel. Why? Because the characters are representing some political figures. So when uh, the fictional characters represent some other figures, it is called allegorical novel. So uh, Orwell says that it reflects uh, the Russian Revolution, Bolshevik Revolution of 1970. This is also known as the Stalin era. This book was wrote in 1943-44 when uh, the wartime alliance with Soviet Union was at the height and Stalin was regarded highly by the British people, uh, a circumstances that Orwell hated. Orwell hated the totalitarian government held by the Russians in the Bolshevik revolution. When it was being published in 1945, because of its political propaganda, the publication was delayed because it was not accepted by the various publishers because they were fear of uh, Stalin. There is a very famous quotation, uh, all animals are equal, but some are more equal than others. Some are the pigs. So we will discuss this uh, quotation in detail. All animals means uh, the all animals are who are living in the animal farm. They all are equal, but the pigs are more equal than those other animals. These uh, character names are very important. Old Major is representing Karl Marx. So which character representing which figure is very, very important. Old Major Karl Marx. Le uh, Napoleon is representing Joseph Stalin. Then Snowball, Leon Trotsky, and Mr. Pilling, uh, Pilkington is representing Winston Churchill. So these names you must remember and what they represent is equally important. This is the character. What is the name of this character? Boxer. 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 Boxer, Boxer. Boxer, who says that I will work harder and Napoleon is always right. So he was a blind follower of Napoleon. Yes, sir. One night all the animals assembled in a barn of Mr. Jones Manor. This name is again important in which uh, Manor farm uh, they are uh, assembling. So it is the farm of Mr. Jones Manor. And there he, they hear uh, the meeting of the old major. The old major is a pig to describe his dream that he had about a world where all animals live freely from the tyranny of the human masters. So they are assembling in the farmhouse of Mr. Jones Manor and they are going to hear the speech of the old major, Wes. Again, there is a voice problem. Should I go ahead? Am I audible? I'm sorry for the disconnection. Uh, there's a lot of problem today. So whenever you feel uh, the disturbance in the voice, can you let me know so that I can reconnect myself? Am I audible now?
Yes, sir. Okay, so we are talking about the annual farm. The setting, uh, the beginning of the novel is uh, starting with uh, the assembly of all the animals at the farmhouse of Mr. Jones Manor. And they are going to hear, uh, hear a speech from a pig whose name is Old Mazer. Old Mazer is a pig and he is going to give a speech and there he is going to describe about his dream. And what his dream is all animals lives free from the tyranny of human masters. So there he is going to describe about his dream and Old Mazer died soon and after the meeting all the animals were inspired by the philosophy of animalism by Old Major and they make a rebellion against Mr. Jones. The two major figures are Snowball and Napoleon. They prove themselves important figures and the planners of the philosophy of animalism. The revolution occurs when uh, Jones Manor forgets to feed the animals and as a result, Mr. Jones and his men are chased off from the farm by these animals who are living in the farmhouse of Jones Manor. Manor Farm was renamed as Animal Farm after it was taken over by the animals and the seven commandments of animalism are painted on the barn wall. These uh, seven commandments are important from exam point of view. What are the commands that are being set by the animals? That is uh, set for the animals by Napoleon is important. Napoleon is the chief controller of all the animals. He even chased a snowball off the animal farm. Snowball is chased away. So the entire animal farm is controlled by Napoleon. And he makes uh, seven commandments of animalism. And these are the commandments you can note down or you can have uh, the first one is whatever goes upon two legs is an enemy. Means the two leg bad, four leg good. Whatever goes upon four leg or has the wings is a friend. So this uh, uh, commandment is also known as two leg good, four leg, uh, two leg bad, four leg good uh, commandment. The third one, all animals shall wear clothes. Sorry, no animal shall wear clothes. This is the third commandment that was given. No animal shall sleep in bed. This was the fourth commandment. No animal shall drink alcohol. No animal shall kill any other animal. All animals are equal. These are the seven commandments set by Napoleon when he is taking over the manor, when he is taking over the farm. The seven commandments of animalism are broken by the pigs because they think that they are more powerful, they are more intelligent than the other animals. So uh, these commandments are broken by pigs and the language of the commandments are changed no animals shall drink alcohol is changed to no animals shall drink alcohol to excess. So this commandment was changed later on. And finally, seven commandments are reduced to one command. And that command was all animals are equal, but some are more equal than others. So these were uh, the main points of the animal farm. Now coming to uh, the next very important novel, 1984, published in uh, 1949. So uh, there is a description of the totalitarian government of Russia. That totalitarian government is controlled by, an, uh, by a character called Big Brother. This character is very important. He is the leader of the party. And uh, there is another leader who is uh, sitting in the opposition is Goldstein. 
he is the leader of the brotherhood and an anti party organization there are other characters also like parson who is uh, the neighbor of winston winston is the protagonist who is uh, against the party who is against the big brother this is another man mr charrington he is the member of the thought police ample fourth is a poet who is a sorts of uh, working with winston and uh, Mr. Sim is a newspeak expert, so we will uh, talk about each and everything in detail. This is a very interesting and important novel from exam point of view. It is again a dystopian novel because again it is talking about the political upheaval of uh, the Russia. It is satirical and uh, political social fiction. the setting of this novel is important the setting is in air strip 1 air strip 1 is a place uh, that is in great britain formerly it was in great britain but uh, later on it was uh, formed as a state of oceania so in the exam it will be asked uh, air strip 1 the setting of 1984 air strip 1 or oceania so the setting is in oceania where society is tyrannized by the party of its totalitarian ideology the party is controlled by the big brother totalitarian ideology means the full control of the entire nation everything is in the control of one man the king is in the sole power there is no parliament everything is controlled by big brother so the novel depicts a state where party propaganda tells people what to think even the people are not allowed to think freely they are not allowed to do anything freely every time they are under watch even their mind is controlled by the big brother so citizens 1984 so no it happens to everyone so uh, the novel 1984 published in 1949 it is a dystopian novel because it talks about the political upheaval political disturbances of the russian revolution so it is a satire on the political parties especially stalin and trotsky it is a political novel and it is also a social fiction the novel is set in air strip 1 this is the place formerly it is uh, known as great britain and it is a part of oceania so you can say that the setting is in oceania or air strip 1 both the question may come in the exam so you must know this both the names air strip 1 and oceania this is the setting of 1984 this is the place where the society is tyrannized by the party and the party is led by big brother big brother is following a totalitarian ideology totalitarian ideology is an ideology in which everything is controlled by the party even people cannot think of their own if they are thinking differently they are being punished even their mind is being monitored every time by the party the people who are of the party so even they cannot think differently this is the totalitarian ideology they even tell the people what to think how to think what to do and what to do the opening lines of the novel is very important it was a bright cold day in april and the clocks were striking 13 this is the opening line of the novel very important big brother who is the head of the party using different methods to have the totalitarian control over the people so he using different different methods to control them 
one is thought police this is also known as think pole pole for police we have the secret police of the super state oceania who discover and punish punish the thought crime <coughs> they punish the people who are not following the government rule who are not following the rules of big brother so thought police is the one means of controlling the people the next is news peak news peak is created by the totalitarian government with its fictional leader big brother and they limit the free thought and free speech because the free thought and free speech is not allowed in the totalitarian government so news peak is used to control the limit of thought and limit of speech and the very important one is the tele screen tele screen is a type of television so in every house there was a television which is monitoring just like a cctv that who uh, who people is doing what thing so it is a propaganda tool used by the big brother to get into people's head and control them so th uh, through this tele screen by monitoring each and every activity of the people he used to read their mind and what they are thinking what they are doing everything was monitored it also monitors everyone's actions speech and complete control of, uh, of every aspect of human existence so now you must have got the complete idea what totalitarian government is so i'll show you a picture of tele screen there are the two pictures uh the great sir <laughs> <laughs> what a real life connection <laughs> so this is the picture taken from 1984 this is the tele screen which is installed in every home and that oh tele screen is shown with a uh, big brother and big brother is, is that means big brother is watching everyone so people used to sit in the corner just to save themselves what they are doing what they are not doing so every activity is being monitored by the tele screen and from this uh, this 1984 uh, this quotation of modi has been taken big brother is watching you one day i uh, saw this quotation in your newspaper and then i uh, was able to connect that who was big brother big brother is uh, the man from 1984 yes sir so now you i am sure you will never forget this character big brother yes sir yes sir so the protagonist of the novel is winston smith who is the member of the outer party that means who is sitting in the against of the big brother and he works for the ministry of truth which is also called mini true which is responsible for propaganda and historical revisionism his job is to rewrite the past newspaper articles so that the historical regard support the current party time he was a good man in fact so winston smith is a diligent and skillful worker but he secretly hates the party because he is not in the favor of totalitarian government and he is dreaming of doing a rebellion against big brother it popularized the adjective orwellian which describes deception secret surveillance and manipulation of the past by a totalitarian or authoritarian state The story of Winston Smith begins in this novel from 4th of April 1984 and that is the reason this novel is entitled 1984 in one of the exams this question was asked what is the reason of calling this novel 1984 because the winston smith who is the protagonist of this novel the story of this character starts from 4th of april 1984 that is the reason it is known with 1984 the social class system of oceania is having the three fold means it is divided into three parts one is called the upper class middle class and lower class upper class is called inner party is and it is having the 2% of population the middle 
class that is the outer party that is uh, who is sitting in the against is 13 percent and the rest of the population that is the lower class people called proles are 85 percent so this percent is again very important i saw this uh, question in one of the exam what is the percentage of the middle class people in uh, 1984 2% upper class, 13% middle class, and rest 85% are the lower class. This is a clipping that I have taken from the novel 1984 because these are the propaganda on which the party, the inner party is working. They say that war is peace. This phrase has been taken from this very novel, war is peace. This is that if we are doing a war, actually we are uh, maintaining a peace. Freedom is slavery and ignorance is a strength. These all three phrases have been taken from this novel. The party believed that they could endlessly engage in a war to keep peace in the country. So this is the ideology that they are following, that keep the people engaged in the war. So if the people will be engaged in the war, so inside the country, there will be a peace. Such a horrible ideology that they follow. So these three slogans are very famous. So now we come to know the origin of these very famous slogans. War is peace, freedom is slavery. And ignorance is a strength. Then a very famous essay, a non-fiction by George Orwell, again very important. It is entitled, Why I Write. This is essay published in 1946. It is the personal journey of becoming a writer. Why he became a writer and what are the things he is focusing to write. So it is a type of mini autobiography in which he is uh, describing about his poems how he tried his hand in poems and he failed and then again he tried in ha his hands in short stories and finally uh, wrote the novels. And then he became a full-fledged writer. He describes four great motives for writing. These motives are very important. Four motives he described for writing. He explains that all these motives are present but in different proportions. And these proportions vary from time to time and vary from man to man. But he is talking about his own proportion. So what are those four motives that are very important? The first motive is sheer egoism. Egoism is the first motive described by George Orwell. These are very important from exam point of view. Orwell argues that a writer writes from a desire to seem clever means if uh, a, a reader is reading the work, he should feel like the writer is clever. To be talked about means uh, if he becomes famous, everyone will talk about the writer. To be remembered after death, to get your own back on grown ups, uh, uh, on grown ups and snubbed you in childhood. These are the reasons or uh, motives that are called the sheer egoism. The next is aesthetic enthusiasm. This is the second motive of becoming a writer described by Orwell, where he explains that present in writing is the desire to make one's writing look and sound good. The writing should look and sound good, having pleasure in the impact of one sound on another and the firmness of good prose over the rhythm of a good story. He said that good prose is like a window pane. Window pane means the glass of the window. So some of the quotations of this essay are very important and that is the reason they are asked in different, different exams. This is also a very important quotation. Good prose is like a window pane. The third motive is historical impulse. He sums this up stating this motive is the desire to see things as they are. 
this is the origin of this phrase desire to see the things as they are this appears in this essay to find out true facts and store them up for the use of posterity and the fourth one is political purpose that is a very important purpose he writes that no book is genuinely free from the political bias every book is having the impact of political uh, political phenomena political backgrounds every book no one, no book is genuinely free and further explains that this motive is used very commonly in all forms of writing whether it's a novel it's a play or it's a poem in broader sense citing a desire to push the world in a certain direction in every person he says that the opinion that art should have nothing to do with politics is itself a political attitude this quotation is again very important he's talking about uh, those persons who say that uh, art should have nothing to do with the politics he says that it uh, this quotation itself is a political attitude if you are connecting the art with the politics that means you yourself is uh, having a political attitude he concludes they say explaining it is invariably where i lacked a political purpose he has uh, that means he has not lacked any political purpose and he said that i wrote lifeless books and was betrayed into the purple passages sentences without meaning decorative adjectives and humbug generally so this is uh, the essay from which this quotation has been taken that is uh, i lacked a political purpose that i wrote lifeless books this question has been asked many times so it has been taken from why i write